Well, probably ought to get started. Uh, as you could tell, my name is Todd Hatfield with HECO Industrial Service Groups. I'm uh, Vice President of Engineering and Repair. Been involved with the company from the time that about 1980 all the way to now. Graduated from college in 1985, electrical engineering. Uh, from that point, I was involved. We had a coil manufacturing division, HECO Coil. Was involved with that, managing that, and managing uh, the uh, repair facility and doing engineering. So, kind of had did a lot of things over a period of time. Um, but my background primarily now is repairing, solving problematic motor designs, improving motor designs, uh, giving customers ideas on how to take a problematic motor and make it better. And most of the time being able to do that with the existing motor. This is an example, Mark touched on it earlier, if some of you that were in here, um, this utility came to us back in I think 2006 and they said they'd been having repetitive failures over a period of many years and the different repair vendors weren't solving the problem. They were repairing the motor like I talked about earlier, but then the repetitively the motor kept failing. So they sent it to us. I love those challenges by the way, you can send those to us. I love those challenges because there's always an answer. If you dig in deep enough, there's an answer why that's happening. In this case, uh, this motor, 800 horsepower, 900 RPM, 4,000 volt, um, will move on. They had 30 of these in operation and two spares, and they were getting repetitive failures. Just breaking the motor down, it's a sleeve bearing design, um, you know, just showing some of the component parts. The, the rotor was a special design. It was a coal crusher motor and it had a dual cage or a double cage, double squirrel cage rotor. So what does that mean? It had two different uh, bar designs in the same rotor. Why? Well, I won't get into too much detail, but because they needed the starting torque of this round bar with a certain conductivity, but when it ran, and if any of you have heard of the skin effect, the current that goes a little bit lower to the laminations, th then the picture isn't showing up, but there's a bar located right here. It's shaded with the lighting. So we started digging into this thing. We found consistently on two different machines cracking of the inner ring. And then we looked at the design of the inner ring. The, 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 bar, the ring was slotted, the bar went into the ring like this, but the typical, after years and years of seeing these failures, the typical failure mode on a design like this <coughs> is where the crack propagates from the side of the bar to the bottom of the slot or the uh, slot of the shorting ring and then cracks through. It's not that it's a bad design, but there are better designs and you can improve it. So another Poor thing about this design, good in the original concept, but bad when you're trying to maintain and rebuild the motor. The cooling fan, picture doesn't show it real well, was part of the outer shorting ring. So if there was an issue with the cooling fan, it's not showing it well, but there's crack here and porosity, and you like had a fan blade break, well now you're impacting the cooling, and but it just wasn't a good way to do it. It was good back in 1960, when they did it, but for rebuilding 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 years later, not a good idea. Um, other problems, the way it was designed, previous repairs, these are called fingers that are pressing against the laminations to keep the stack compressed. Um, we were seeing some hairline cracking on the outer bar to the outer shorting ring. Different things that just weren't good about the design. So we evaluated it. One of the first things we evaluated and found out was the shorting ring material was a copper alloy, very typical, but the alloy wasn't typical, 62% conductivity. <clears throat> what that means is conductivity is rated 100% copper is at 100% conductivity. They base conductivity on 100% copper. 
and then alloys, you add different alloys into the copper and it changes the resistivity of the material or the conductivity. In this case, those of shorting rings were 62%. So thinking out of the box, I said, well, what if, because that material is not available, 16 to 20 weeks to get this material, what if we just put copper on those shorting rings? What would it do? Not do it in the design, but do it on paper, do it a design analysis. Well, we looked at all of that. We looked at the mechanical deficiencies of the design, that slotted ring that I talked about. We evaluated all this and came up with a solution. But before we did that, we had to gather that information I keep talking about. We got information from the customer about the original motor speed torque curves, which are very valuable for evaluating a motor if you're gonna redesign it. Uh, we also got the inertia. Uh, they happen to have good information. We were able to dig up the inertia of the load, greatly impacts you know, the starting condition of the motor. And from that, we then uh, started to think about alternate, alternative solutions. Um, Obtaining the original information, the only way that you can come up with an alternative solution is having that information, be able to plug it into the engineering analysis. So um, I do this repetitively over and over again with customers. I say, I gotta have the, the inertia of the load of that fan or of that pump or whatever. I've gotta have the speed torque curve if you want us to redesign or improve that motor. We came up with an improved design. On the bottom bar, the bar ended up being the same. We changed the shorting ring to what we call a trough ring. So now instead of being in a slot, the bar goes into a trough. And the reason it's stronger is the ring actually is physically thicker in that, believe it or not, that weld joint, when you weld it in a trough like that, makes a stronger mechanical joint. On the outer ring, we made it a little bit thicker. We changed the material to 100% copper on both shorting rings. We went through all of this. We had to design a new cooling fan because we got rid of that casted blade design. So we had to fabricate a steel fan. We did all these things, did some other improvements as we saw some motor motors. Some of them required new laminations, thicker steel finger plates and so on. And through the engineering analysis, just by asking, well, what if changing it to 100% copper only changed the locked rotor torque by 2%? When you evaluated the load speed torque curve and the inertia, that had no impact on the design. Uh, the breakdown torque, no impact, again, only a 3% drop. So. What the idea was is we wanted to come up with a, a valuable materials that we could s satisfy the customer need if they had a breakdown, not making them wait 16 to 20 weeks for materials, then repairing it. So we went through these calculations and we came up with a new design. We made some improvements in the laminations. I won't go into those details, but this is a rotor lamination print, laser laminations. And then we started to uh, uh, present, you know, uh, apply the new designs, a new finger press plate uh, that's compressing the laminations, but it's tight up against the steel, fabricating a new steel fan blade or fan for cooling, uh, installing the new bars in the lower cage, um, showing the bars going in, and then fabricating that new shorting ring in a trough design what you see here is a trough. It's machined out so the bar will fit into that trough. Then brazing and welding. <clears throat> you set it up vertical, the bar goes down into that trough. You put the right up type of flux and then you silver solder. We use about 15% silver in this uh, brazing technique. And you essentially are filling that trough up with liquid braze. And if you do it right, you get a very strong, good bond. Um, fabricating the outer cage or shorting ring, the new shorting ring, machining it, stalling the bars, 
and then getting ready to put the, the shorting ring on. And then the same thing, brazing and welding that ring in place so that we have the finished look of the inner ring and the outer ring and the bars with the new fan. In some cases or a lot of cases, we fabricated a new shaft. Not a simple task because we're dealing with 4140 shaft steel with A36 steel ribs. Not an everyday task of welding those two materials together. High carbon steel with lower carbon steel. You try to weld those together and you'll get cracking if you don't know what you're doing, if you don't have a, an approved weld process. So the before and after, the original rotor, and then the final rotor. The best picture I could uh, show you, but showing the anomalies of the original design, some of the issues, and then what it looked like afterwards. So eventually, we did in this last year finish the 32nd rotor for these guys. And it's, the reason I show this is it's just a great example of how one problem that can have repetitive effects that people haven't figured out can really relate to a great improvement for the customer over multiple motors, in this case, 32 motors. Uh, we did this from 2006 to now. So over a, a little over or about a 10 year process. So by asking the right questions, assessing and understanding the problem or providing a practical engineered solution. Mission accomplished. Um, so again, the, I showed this example and we have many, many others that we show to show you how you can make a motor better by asking better questions, by digging into the design, getting more information, and you can actually create a better motor in the end. Any questions?